I'm here at the Crown Plaza in Palo Alto, where the Foundation of Excellence is having their gala. Tonight, hundreds of students have gathered here and the communities to support this wonderful foundation that supports engineering and medical students in India. They pay for the education and the students carry it forward by sponsoring two students of their own. Let me take you to the highlights of this event. This is Kavita reporting from Palo Alto for Satare TV. You guys are all graduates of the program from Skol uh, Foundation of, for Excellence. Yes. And what area are you? did you graduate in? So I graduated in uh, engineering, okay. electronics and communication engineer. Okay. And how about you? I graduated in electrical engineering as well. How about you? Uh, I too for my electrical engineering. Uh, computer engineering okay. and mechanical engineering. Wow. What cities are you all from? Chennai. Chennai? Chennai? Uh, so I'm from a small town called Katak in Orissa. Okay. Yeah. And you are? I do not. Hyderabad? Yeah. yeah, Bangalore, Bangalore and Chennai. Wow. So, is it safe to say that your education was funded and supported by Foundation for Excellence? Absolutely. You, you don't have to have any station around it, definitely. So, during our uh, entire, uh, all the four years of our graduation, the expectation was we have to meet the meritorious criteria which they set. So, every one of us who qualified as what are the list of people who are here. So we, we were funded throughout the course, all through all the four years. And how were you selected for participating in the program? So there is a facilitator who is uh, who is across different places in India. So the facilitator uh, gets track of people who are merit means, who are in need, and uh, they pick the people and they recommend to FFE. And from FFE perspective, they just uh, make sure that uh, the eligibility criteria is met and the consistent eligibility consistency in, in their uh, meritorious thing is taken care. I'm here with Mr. Bhargav. He's here supporting the Foundation for Excellence. And of course, everyone knows Five Hour Energy. How could we not? So you're speaking tonight. Tell me about this event and what it means to you. Well, um, as you may or may not know, we just released a big uh, film on all the work that we're doing in philanthropy. That'll affect um, pretty much more than half the population in India. So when they asked me to speak here to philanthropists, I'm sure in the Bay Area there are a lot of people who want to do something. I think they've done well for themselves, and now it's time to do something for, for India, for where you're from. And so for that, I mean, it was hard to refuse. So um, I'm here. You, know, you have a very big heart. Um, what motivates you from the core to actually give back to the community? And why do you think it's so important for everybody to feel that way? Well, I don't have a big heart. And mm -hmm. I, all I look at is, what else would I do? In other words, I don't have, I'm too old for toys. And uh, what else do you do? I, I get up in the morning and do what? Make more money? It's, it's, at some point, it's irrelevant. So you try to do something, so the only choice is to do something for those who don't have less. So it's not really so much that I'm a good guy, it's just I don't have anything else to do. So I have to do something useful, and that's it. We all start that, that philanthropy is easy, and then we realize, then you go in and you start digging in and you realize it's way harder than business. And then most of everybody that I've seen just messes it up because it's just like business. You have to do things, the right things, to make results happen. And we think it's not. And so we, I, I certainly messed up. And uh, so I hopefully learned from that. And today, hopefully, I'll just give them a little idea of what I did. And maybe some of them will feel, OK, that makes sense to me. Why should I start from scratch? You know, part of being in business, all of us, is going to be to not pay dues, not do things the hard way. I mean, our whole job is to do it easy way, right? So if you can learn from somebody else who messed up, that's way better than you messing up. Yeah. Could you have something for the folks that are sitting at home that can't be here tonight? Well, my, my basic uh, point really is for my life is that at the end of it, you're looking at it and saying, am I really just going to make a living? Is that it? That's my life? If you haven't gotten there, of course, you should work hard and make a living. But at some point, you say, there's got to be more to my life than just toys and pointless, you know, showing off to others what I'm... 
or, or indulging in the fashions of the day. I mean, in the early 70s, you used to call it cheap thrills. There's some point where cheap thrills are just boring. I mean, they're just not worth anything. And so what I would say is, look for something that has meaning. Because it's not, we don't do it for others. If you do something that has meaning, you do it for yourself. That's it. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful message. Thank you. I'm here with the founder of the Foundation of Excellence, Prabhu Goyal. Prabhuji, tell me about what inspired you to find to start this foundation. Well, it was a it was a situation in which we had been blessed with a good fortune. Uh, I had just sold my company in 1990, and uh, we had more uh, more money than we knew knew what we could do with. So we decided that we must uh, make good use of that money, and one way to do that is to help others. And we decided that we wanted to make a difference in the lives of 10,000 other children. And uh, we didn't know how. And as we moved over time between 1990 and 1994, we came upon the idea that we would find the very bright but underprivileged uh, uh, children in India and help them through an engineering or medical school education so that it would dramatically change their life from where they were to where they end up being. And so the model we came upon was to find the students that were in the top 15% of their class, had admission to engineering or medical school, but could not afford to pay for their education. And uh, that has been the primary thrust of what we have done. And today we are supporting about 3,600 scholars a year. Next year our goal is to support 4,200. Uh, we've graduated over 5,000 already as engineers or doctors. And the, the beautiful thing is that uh, these scholars are giving back to the foundation. Uh, so now we ask them to uh, take a commitment that they'll support at least two scholars like themselves in their lifetime. And if that pledge can be ma maintained, then we'll have a self-sustaining foundation, a foundation that will feed itself. And uh, we're also uh, providing soft skills to these uh, scholars because many of them come from environments where the English skills are not very good, they're not as confident of themselves, their communication skills are weak, they don't interview well. So we're packaging that together and providing that to them in India as well as finding internships for them where they get exposed to other uh, areas. And uh, then we're building a network of the uh, FFE scholars, the alumni and the donors so that that network can be a resource to our uh, FFE students so that in life if they need some help they can always reach out to that. So we've already started seeing examples where some of the scholars who have come to the US are reaching into this network to get, get help in the US. And I think to, the, to us that is phenomenal. So it's an overall system. We're trying to improve it every year so that we add more and more value to ultimately to the scholar. I'm speaking to Sheetal Ori. She's the Director of Operations for the FFE. Sheetal, tell me some of the challenges this year in operations. Well, uh, it's always a challenge to raise funds, you know, and especially for these low-income scholars who we're trying to fund. But to the generosity of the Silicon Valley, as you can see, we have amazing donors who are here tonight who are sponsoring these scholars. There were challenges, yes, but I believe we have overcome them. We still have miles to go, but we will keep on trying because it's for always a good cause that you know we're doing this entire fundraiser tonight. Great, that is wonderful. How many, what is the goal that you're trying to reach tonight? One million. Okay, wonderful, I hope you achieve it and then some. Thank you. Manish, you're on the board of FFE. Tell me some of the goals that you have for this year. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I've been on the board of FFE for about, what, two years now? Uh, it's a great organization, and the goal that we have today is to raise about a million dollars. Um, you know, on average, it costs us about $750 per student per year. Um, so that's about uh, $3,000, right? That's quite a few kids. Uh, over the last 21 years, we have an alumni base of more than $10,000. And um, we're starting to do really well, raising funds in India as well as in the U.S. As we both know, um, India has a huge youth population, right? 356 yes. million. Yes. That is the key asset that the country has. And if we were to educate it, that is how we will reap the power. Um, so yeah, I'm quite excited, of course, to be of being associated with FFE. I'm here with Venk Shukla. He's the current president of Thai, and he's been the president of the Foundation for Excellence for the past 18 years. Venk, tell me about this foundation. You know, the, uh, we started the foundation basically to, to take care of those students in India who are the brightest and the poorest. 
and we wanted to support them for the most expensive education in India, which is engineering and medical education. We started small, but uh, Prabhu had Prabhu Goel, who is the you know who is the main donor, has been the main donor forever. Uh, he put a big challenge, and he, and you know uh, this has been a very very satisfying journey. Now this year. I think now we have supported 14,000 students, enabled them to become engineers and doctors in India. If the father of the kid is a chaprasi in a bank, mm -hmm. the kids will not qualify. So this is rickshaw pullers, maid servants, auto rickshaw drivers, barbers, those kind of people. Is that kind of a family background that the kids come from. But they still have academic merit, so they've made it all the way through elementary school and high school. So what is the push that they've had in the academic years, in the formative years, foundation years, to get them to be merit scholars in, in college? You know, you never know. I mean, there are, there are millions of kids, and, and to a large number of them, see, poverty becomes a, see, is such a, a drag on them that they can't achieve their full potential. For others, they persevere and they overcome and it's those ones that we find.